Hello. Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today we have my two boys, two of my three boys actually, not forgetting Teddy. Um, and I thought I'd do a bit of a life update video because we've been quite quiet, we've missed quite a few uploads. Um, and we've just had so much going on, there's quite a few changes. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in hearing more a bit about behind the scenes, everything, then please stay tuned. I'm gonna go through house updates and the move, Phil's health and his ever increasing hairless patches. Um, we've got the camper van. We've actually sold the camper van. I'll give you a bit more information about that. Um, Mia is now back in nursery. Um, so I'll give some more info about that. We did take her out when COVID got really bad. Um, what else have we got to talk about? Um, we've got some new garden furniture. So that's a nice little new addition to our tiny house that we currently live in. Um, and yeah, England's reopening. So we've got loads of stuff booked now that lockdowns are lifted. It's not completely lifted yet. Boris just announced that it's been extended for another month. But most of the stuff we can now do, we can go like swimming, we can go to any places. We've got loads of different bits booked and holidays booked, wed weddings coming up that have been postponed for the last year. Milo standing in front of the camera as per every video that he features in. Um, and knocking the camera over apparently. Nice one, Milo. Get back. Come on, come with me and Phil. Come sit with me and Philip. There we go. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna go through. So first and foremost is uh, Phil's health. Um, get loads and loads of comments. I do do occasionally, I try to do them quite regularly because of the amount of comments we get, videos on Phil's health and why he looks the way he looks. Um, simply because we get so many comments on it and I'm conscious that not everyone is a subscriber that watches us. So Phil has alopecia, uh, he's eight years old, he's fine otherwise, we have treated, we've tested for thyroid, we've treated for thyroid, he doesn't have it. Um, we've treated for, well we've tested for Cushing's and a couple of other known ones, zinc deficiencies, um, all the common stuff and we've even seen specialists, the European specialists, not just the UK specialist, for multiple tests everything you can get done he hasn't been tested in the last eight months um but we've been told it is alopecia and it is purely cosmetic he is rapidly losing hair now which is common in magnets of a certain age and that do have alopecia so it is just progressing and it is progressing rapidly there is nothing else of concern and um, he's becoming a bit grumpier in his older age certainly since turning eight um but no there is nothing else wrong with him other than aesthetically um which we are fine with but it is getting to the point now where he uh, we have to put suntan lotion on him if he goes outside in the summer and in the winter this year we, he'll need some sort of scarf um definitely to cover this area and potentially even a jumper if it continues to spread down his back um so yes yeah, so that's update one okay high five high five good boy mm -hmm. oh you're gonna dodge me mm -hmm. got ya got ya um, okay, next update, Mia is now back in nursery. She's been back now for a month, I think. When the schools went back in the UK and they reopened, we sent her back in. Um, she's doing quite well, but we do have a few concerns. Now with the amount of time that she's not socialized and now that everything's reopening where we can go and do stuff with her, like we can go to soft play centers, we can take her to the swimming pool, we can meet our friends and go to play parks and stuff like that. We've noticed that she can be like, She's, she's really shy and really nervous. She's got your animals, obviously. She's grown up with them. But um, watching her in soft play, she won't go and play with other children. Um, so I spoke to nursery about it and they say that she plays completely fine when she's in nursery and she's quite um, social with all the babies in her group. But she's not, if we're around her, she'll just stay right by us the whole time. So we're a bit concerned. I'm sure lots of parents with lockdown babies are concerned about their child's development and I know nursery will be good for socialising her but obviously that is a select group of children as well that she sees regularly so we're trying desperately to do stuff weekly with her like going to zoos going to soft plays in particular because that is more where she is alone with other children and you're just stood watching and going to rescue and they don't come down the slide um but we're trying to do loads of stuff like that with her at the moment because we are a bit worried about her own development and her own confidence levels to play with other children. Um, 
so yeah so that's an ongoing like work in progress she's great with our friends kids um, and now that we can see them regularly and we're not in any kind of lockdown situation where we can't go and socialize with them that's good but again it's more like new people meeting new people is definitely a development area for her um, and I'm sure that's the same with lots of people so I'm trying not to think too much into it or to put too much pressure on her I'm just trying to give her as many opportunities as possible to be in those types of situations um so yeah, says so that, and that I guess kind of covers about England reopening. We've got a few ho family holidays booked coming up. We're going to Grandma's house next weekend. We're going to go visit her. And um, we've got friends' weddings coming up. So we've got lots of different things going on. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be able to go and do stuff. We're staying in the UK though. We're not trying to venture out. I think that's far too complicated. Um, but it's nice to know that we've got a few staycations and stuff weekends away. Um, to go on. Okay, now the other big one is we sold our very posh, shiny camper van. We only owned it a year, but it took all of our life savings to buy it. Um, and the amount that we were using it, well, obviously we were in so much lockdown that we didn't actually get to use it for half the time. But then when we were able to use it, we've got all backloggers of weddings going on um, and different things that actually this year, I'm not sure how many times we would get to go away. Um, and whilst it was beautiful and lovely, we can put that money to better use, putting it towards um, the future house that we'll be moving into, which I'll come on to. Um, and yeah, Shane said it was the best time to sell, um, which it was. We were lucky in that we didn't lose money on it because of lockdown. There are a lot more people going on staycations and staying in the UK. And that has become a, a genre of holiday that is now very in fashion and popular, going camping. Um, so yeah, there's this, this high demand for camper vans at the minute. So we've sold ours. Um, it's gone and I am so gutted. Um, definitely it was more like Shane wanted to sell it than me. Um, but it was the right decision. It was a smart decision to sell whilst the prices were up. Um, and we're just going to, we're either going to go and become temp people, which would be a huge saving, but I'm a bit too snobby at the same time to sleep in a tent. And I don't know, I feel like I can do it. My friends all go in tents. You can have all the mod cons in there. You can have a blow up bed, etc. I can do it. It will just be a massive come down from that beautiful camper van that we had or the other option is we just buy a van um and then you can get these like tents that connect to it driveway tents they're called or driveway awnings um and then you could still sleep in the van just put a mattress or a blow up bed in the van i don't know why that for me makes it like a a nicer level of camping i just feel a bit more secure when you can lock a door and stay in it um so yeah that's the other option is we're just going to buy a bog standard van hopefully convert it ourselves eventually um, like slow and steady and, and build it to our spec um, but then we can attach a tent to it as well and have a bit more space so I think that's what we're doing next we're on the hunt for a van um, and then ooh, so yeah so camper van's gone tent holidays for us in the future and they'll be just as exciting um, but a sad sad day when we had to say goodbye to it because it was so beautiful and so perfect um and then finally moving house has hit a stalemate um not gonna lie i have lost all motivation in searching prices are continuing to skyrocket for stuff that would be 20 percent cheaper six months ago i can't believe the prices i would have thought they would have dropped by now um and then the fact that when you try to go to see them they've already sold like within a week or something they're selling like it's insane the market at the moment and I just feel like we're in a surge and if you were to buy now, maybe you'll end up in negative equity in the next 12 months time, I don't know. But it's just crazy, the prices that have gone um, and the, the, the type of house that we're looking for is a real family house. It's not like a city centre, it's not a new build. They're difficult to come by in their own and then to try and find the land with it um, is hard. So I've, I've kind of, I still search every not every day anymore it's probably once a week and I'm searching for everything that's been added in the last week and I've still got property alerts going on for whenever something gets added but they're just not being added um so yeah I've just I've just lost all motivation in it at the minute at one point I was so desperate to move and now I want to but at the same time the logical part of me is saying no it's not the right time you you could end up in negative equity it could be a big mistake so yeah so We've obviously got more of a deposit now we sold the camper van but um we're nowhere closer in terms of finding a house um 
we are going to a wedding in Northern Ireland in August, start of August. So we'll be over there. Shane is actually from Nor Northern Ireland and um, he grew up in a place called Enniskillen. So we are going to go and look at a few properties over there that would be moving country, but it's still part of the UK. Um, and it will be moving back to Shane's hometown. He has obviously a, a network of friends over there, but I do not. Um, but it is, a, you know, that would be the countryside setting. Um, it's a lot easier to get properties with land over there than it is in Manchester or around Manchester city centre. Um, so yes, we're going to go. We've got a few properties lined up that are currently for sale that have been on the market for like six months. So hopefully they don't sell before we go over there and we can go view them. Um, and I've got alerts over there to try and line up quite a few viewings. So in August, we'll have a bunch of um, come view some properties with us there. It would just be moving further away from family, which is what makes me slightly anxious. And then finally, I shall take you into the garden and show you our new garden furniture where Teddy and me... Oh, oh wait a second. Let's just spotlight Milo right now. Lounging. <laughs> yeah, let me go and show you the garden um, and our new furniture. It's so nice. Let's go spin you around. I don't know what Teddy and Nico are up to. Hi babies, can you help me show them the new garden furniture? Bum, bum, bum. I should have tidied up out here to be fair. Ow! Okay. So this is our new garden furniture. We got it from White Stores. Um, it's a fire pit table, so let me just lift this off so you can see. That is a nice centre fire pit. So beautiful. Um, and these cushions are leave outside in the rain and everything. It's weird, guys. You um the rain goes on them and you can just literally like brush it off. Um it's amazing, and then it's all stain-free, washable fabric for pets. Um, but I am a bit obsessed with that. So that's on new furniture, and then this I got I got this in February, but I don't know if you've seen it in the garden yet, but it's my hanging egg chair, it's a double chair, it's so comfortable. And look what Teddy's done to me as Scuttlebug. Teddy. Teddy, show him what you've done. He's entered the destruction phase. Um, a bit later on in life than most puppies do. So we've got that destroyed. I'm going to show you his water bowl now. This was just yesterday. He did that because I didn't walk them until the evening. I was busy at work. And usually I walk them in the morning. So he was very bored. And then... I don't know if you've seen Amelia's house before. This is a playhouse. We upcycled it. It was atrocious when we got it. And now it's atrocious again because of Tedster. Um, yeah, he's been gnawing away at it. He's lost the door handle because of it. Um, but it is completely normal. He's a puppy. I know he's going to go through the destruction phase. We've gone through it with Phil and Nico. Phil flooded the house. Um, he bit into a plumbed in fridge. And flooded the ground floor and Nico destroyed the stairway carpet um so yeah puppy destruction does happen there's not much you can do about it the stuff that I would normally do to avoid is walk them early in the morning um but some days you can't do that and then if you've left them in the garden for too many hours that's just what happens but yeah all is forgiven but he does have a um a taste for plastic don't you? You like to gnaw on plastic with your teeth in teeth. Nine months old and now he starts destroying stuff. It's just a phase though. Just a phase that will last like 12 months. It's me as paddling pool. Leave it guys. This that's our new garden furniture. Come on then. So guys, I think that is all of the... <laughs> going to his destroyed bucket that's all of our updates look at our empty drive with no massive camper van gutted but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye everyone